Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a cool 3D clock that actually works. So I have a simple little clock set up here, it's nothing too fancy, weirdly enough it is just a bunch of cubes but that's not what we're going to focus on. What we're going to focus on is the hour hand and the minute hand moving, making them relative to one another via a C-sharp script. So to get this all set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in several things. I'm going to add in a couple of cubes and they're going to represent the hour and the minute hand. I'm going to change colour uh, so we can actually see them physically working as well so they don't kind of blend into each other. Uh, so in order to do that we need to add in certain objects to allow ourselves to rotate these particular hands. So game object, 3D object and I'm going to stick with a good old cube. Now we need to make sure the cube is in the centre of our clock. So if I do that zero out there. You see the center of my clock is indeed zero, zero, zero. So that's all good. Perfect. And inside that cube, I'm now going to add in another cube. And I'm going to turn this cube into the uh, hour hand. In fact, no, we'll start with a minute hand. I think the minute hand is best place to start. So let's uh, call this min hand. In fact, I'll call this one min rotate so this particular object is going to be the one that rotates and this particular object is the one that shows where our hand is so let's now change the scale of this so we can see our hand in place uh, so i'm going to have this set as three i think and we'll make it fairly thin so i'll have 0.1 and 0.1 on the y as well and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the bottom of this hand to the middle of our min rotate object. So if I drag this up to about there, you can see that that is now in the center. So if we were to rotate this particular object on the Y, you can see it's now starting to act like a clock hand. Uh, I'm now going to turn off the mesh renderer for it. So we do not see that anymore. So we can just see the hand right there. And I'm going to add a quick bit of material to it just so as we can kind of differentiate between uh, the hands. So I'm going to drag a black material onto there. Next thing, I'm going to hold control and press D to duplicate that object. And you probably guessed it. This is going to be the hour hand. So we'll call that hour rotate. And we'll call it our hand. And I'm not going to do the second hand in this, but you can do the second hand with the same logic that we're going to use in this particular video. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the size of that hour hand and I'm going to bring it down a level. So I'm going to take hour rotate and just bring it down to there just so the two hands don't intersect one another. Uh, I'm going to change it to a red color and let's reduce the size of the hour hand to uh, probably two just so it's a bit shorter and also bring it in line so as both the hands are aligned right here. Finally, let's add in the center of our clock so it doesn't look too silly. Uh, so game object, 3D object, and let's go with um, let's go with capsule. Let's zero out that position again, and let's just change the color to that. It doesn't matter too much what your objects are called um, at this point because it is just a simple clock. So let's have that there. Game view, yep, looks fine. So the key to all of this is creating a script which allows us to turn both of these hands relative to one another and also at the correct time. So for example, uh, well, I am going to show you how it, this works relative, but the ideal speed is literally one rotation of the minute hand is an hour, which means that the hour hand will be here. So 12 rotations would mean that the hour hand has done one rotation. So let's set up our script. So right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this, I'm just gonna call it clock turn. I mean, it really doesn't matter what the script is called as long as it's something <laughs> meaningful to you. And it's just taking a moment. I'm sure as you know, with some versions of Unity, they are a little bit slow as we can see. So like I say, we're going to create this um, using the basically inbuilt time within Unity to make sure 
that all of this works as it should do. And this is taking longer than it should. I'm sure many of you have experienced this in the past. I'm not sure why it's opened Visual Studio twice, but it doesn't matter too much. So the way we're going to do this is let's get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. And we're going to set up three different variables. We're going to set up the min hand, the hour hand, and the rotation speed. So let's have a public float and we'll have rotate speed with a semicolon. Next, we'll do the uh, minute hand. So public game object min hand semicolon. And finally, public game object our hand with a semicolon. So we now have to determine how to create that rotate speed. Now the rotate speed is going to be something like 0 0.003, something like that. It's going to be quite a long recurring number. So in order to get that exactly right, we have to say in void start, rotate speed is equal to time dot delta time divided by 60, semicolon. So that will create the rotational speed. And I will show you basically how this clock is working with its full rotations um, towards the end of this video. But this is the actual code we need to make sure that it turns at the correct pace. Uh, so in void update, we then need to tell it that we're turning those two specific hands, but obviously one has to be a lot slower than the other. So in order to do this, we say min hand dot transform dot rotate. And in brackets, we're going to rotate this on the Y axis. So we don't need the X, so zero, comma. And now we put in here rotate speed comma we don't need to rotate on the z or z so zero and then finally we need to do this all relative to the world around us so we put space dot world close bracket semicolon and i'm going to copy that line of code saves me retyping place it below and we'll change it from min hand to our hand now obviously that means both of these hands are going to rotate at the same speed and because we want the hour hand to rotate basically 12 times slower, i.e. 12 rotations of the minute hand makes one rotation of the hour hand, we divide the rotate speed by 12 and save that script. So if we head back into Unity now and let those script, that script compile, let's add a new game object. I'm not going to name anything for now, uh, but I am just going to drag and drop that clock turn script onto there. And you can see rotate speed currently zero. Min hand, let's drag and drop the min rotate object. And then let's drag and drop the hour rotate onto there. And if we press play, we'll be able to see very slowly that this clock is indeed turning. You can see there, there's the rotate speed. Now, this is going to take a very long time. In fact, it will take a good hour for this to go all the way around to show you both hands moving. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to change the rotate speed to one for now. And you can see exactly that's how it's all working. Perfect. And like I said, you can use this same method to create the second hand. Um, same simplicity, you just use the uh, basic functions that you've got here. You've got to remember that time dot delta time is the relative is the sing is the singular time frame that we're in. So you can use that for your seconds. Remember, we've divided by sixty to get a minute, which is what the rotation speed is. And obviously, again, one whole rotation of that is an hour. So part two of this mini tutorial that we're going to do in the next video, we're going to make it so as, in fact, you know what, let's add in that second hand anyway, let's do that. And let's also make it the same as your system clock. So when you press play, it will display your system clock time on this clock face and it will keep ticking over from there and keep the same time as whatever time it is on your system. So until that mini tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.